trying to make wood that's really a grade higher than the log is graded as. Well, here we are again, back at the old Hobby Hardwood, your favorite sawmill channel. If it's not your favorite sawmill channel, I wish it would be your favorite sawmill channel. <laughs> this is Chip. He is also at Hobby Hardwood, and he just woke up from a nap. He's a little sleepy. So today we have another not so good walnut. It's got some bug stain right here on the sapwood. It's not a real problem because I don't much like sapwood, but it's again got a characteristic walnut. Y crack basically means that there's stress running in every plane. Stress running that way, stress running that way, stress running that way, and of course we have a nice hole right in the middle. And you can see where this one's rotted out. If you look real close, you can see all kinds of shake and whatnot. So everything right in here is garbage. So on this particular log, we're reduced to sawing donuts. We can't take anything from this out. It's gonna be discolored and low value. We can't really take anything from here in, because it's rotted. The wood is gonna be here, here, and here. We've got the hole we're not gonna get. We've got the outside we're not gonna get. We gotta get the inside, but unlike a donut, this one's cut into three pieces. You've heard me say it several times. The key to making money with a sawmill is you can't always saw up really good logs to make really good lumber. You have to be able to take logs that have defects. I wouldn't say low value logs, but logs with issues and try to turn them into high value lumber. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. A lot of people just kind of give up and they would uh, spandex saw pattern this guy, which is simply Whack it right across the center, let it crack, shave all that mess off, make a video and go, yay, look how cool we are. We made some really good wood. On the other hand, from a professional standpoint, I need to make sure that I optimize that. Since I had to pay for that log, I mean, that's money I could have better spent at Zaxby's, not that I don't get enough of it, and buying chicken fingers, or I can buy a you know, not so good walnut log and see if I could turn it into high grade hardwood. That is one of the fun things about using a sawmill or having a sawmill. It's a little bit of a technical challenge. Trying to make wood that's really a grade higher than the log is graded as. I guess you could call that upgrading. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, enough jokes. Let's saw this thing up. Just remember, if you like our content, I don't get paid to do this. I do this because I enjoy teaching Sawmill, and I'm hoping you guys are enjoying watching it. If so, please hit the like, hit the subscribe button. It does mean something. It means something to YouTube. It means something to me. It keeps me motivated to keep doing these videos. I thought it'd be a fun one. I like sawing logs that have the issues. Tell me what you think, Chip. Well, first thing we're going to do is take off the old wart. We're going to try to get under that funky stain a little bit, too. So there's very, very little stress in this direction. So that's good. So I gotta remember that. I'll rotate out of this, but I'll remember that the open of the Y has very little stress.
So I've gone right to the tip of that stress track. As far as I need to go on this side, pull these back. All right, now we're gonna clean up the other side of the Y. Take off the bark, get under the discolored sap wood, and go down to where the stress track is. This board's showing very little stress as we had hoped. Go down one more. Looks pretty good. Let's pull that back. So it's important to see how I've set up again after taking those boards off. Now I've got almost a perfect setup, I hope. Uh, this Y crack goes to here, which means I can take that board, that board, that board, and that board with zero cracks, zero defects. I'll probably go down one extra because that'll be on the edge, and then I can start taking off of there. So now, I don't think this log's gonna throw me any surprises, so I'm pretty happy with the way the plan's coming together. We're going to strip these two boards off, maybe three. Now, we just get these. Yeah, I can get one more. Let's get at least two off of this side. Flat as a pancake. I like it. Get one more. That one's starting to move a little bit. I'm going to rotate out now. Go into pattern mode. It's a little off center. I don't like that, but I think the wood is going to turn out higher grade. Let's see. Flat though, very flat. I'm just going to salt down on this. I'm not going to waste my time. My band is getting a little dull. I can hear it starting to scrub. Definitely have the stress in the correct plane. I don't know if the wood's gonna be high grade, but I nailed the stress anyway. Bring it back and look at it. Obviously, any boards through the pith are going to not look good, but if you're looking at these, all of these are high grade, facing better. Exceeds face grade lumber, walnut. 
And this next one will as well. Let's see, definitely. All right, this little scudder right here will, I would imagine. Oh, look at that, got a hollow spot. So this is another example of why you want to get your cant as narrow as possible before you start sawing down. But I got two face grade boards on either side. But the good thing is I didn't screw up a great big old board. If you're gonna have a defect in the center of the board that just pops up out of nowhere, it's good to have it on the short rows. And those look pretty good. Certainly it meets the width criteria for walnut face. Martha moving some walnut to the kiln. That's all we seem to do these days is walnut. That's a big stack of They're double teaming this hunk of bark. Y'all killing that thing. So just remember, these are the worst boards. These don't look bad. Moving on to the next log. Folks, if you like this content, you like me just talking as I'm sawing and trying to show you how to do things, please hit the like and subscribe button. It does keep me motivated to keep making these videos and it lets me know that people are actually watching them, which is important. We will see y'all next week. Bye.